When 2020 returns, Chris Gardner's journey from the men's room to the boardroom to the big screen. How did he do it? There's definitely a dark oh, side. no question. I see both sides. I like this side over here. <laughs> Next. Clyde Memorial Church is an institution in San Francisco, a 10,000 member congregation, a mission that provides food and shelter to the city's homeless. It's run by the Reverend Cecil Williams, who after 37 years still remembers seeing one unusual sight outside his church, a man named Chris Gardner standing in a food line with a baby. You didn't see much of that at all. No, 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 no. So a lot of women with babies, but not a man with a baby. And it just kind of began to, uh, to be a rather regular scene where uh, Chris appeared. He had a program for homeless women with children. And I say, obviously, I'm not a woman, but I am homeless. I have a child. I need some place to stay to get myself together, and he let me in. And all this time, you're, you're studying for the brokerage license? Oh, yeah. Yes. Glide Memorial became a lifeline for him, sometimes supplying food and a room, while Gardner, a trainee at a brokerage firm, struggled through homelessness to earn enough to house and support himself and his infant son, Chris Jr. Caring for his son after his wife left him was part of a promise he'd made to himself because he grew up not knowing who his father was and suffering the abuse of a stepfather, Gardner swore he would never abandon his children. In return, he found a source of inspiration. Giving my son a bath by candlelight. We had no electricity. I didn't know whether I was going to quit, crack, or cry. Some kind of way this child picks up on it. I don't know where, and he says, Papa, you know what? You're a good papa. That was all I needed to go on. The extraordinary trials that Gardner went through finally ended. With a broker's license, once the opportunity was his to seize, the success of this formerly homeless man was astonishing. He started with cold calls, was recruited by other firms, and eventually opened his own institutional brokerage firm in Chicago benefiting, among other things, from government and pension fund rules that created business for minority brokers. <laughs> In other words, hey. yeah, yeah, Others found Gardner's story so compelling that after it was broadcast on 2020, actor and producer Will Smith developed a movie about Gardner called The Pursuit of Happiness, due for release in the winter. Gardner joined the project as a consultant, and as he returned to San Francisco, where his story had unfolded, Smith came along to observe, and then to be Chris Gardner. Chris represents the American dream, the beauty of America. That's it. You, you still know? got a shot. Yep, a little bit of the dark side. There, there's a, a dark side. There's definitely a dark oh, side. Oh, no question. I've you seen know? both sides. I like <laughs> this side over here. <laughs> and Will Smith playing Chris Gardner is only part of this picture. Gardner's son, Chris Jr., is played by Will Smith's son, Jaden. The best weapon is your mind. Smith and his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, contributed $75,000 to the church and shelter that took Gardner in, and even hired Reverend Williams to play himself in the film. I had to wear a wig. A wig, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not a wig. It wasn't oh, a wig. What, what is it? It was a, it was a, a, a hair augmentation. Oh, yeah. You know what? Smith also visited the transit rest station where Gardner once went so he and Chris Jr. would have a place to stay for a few hours when he was homeless. Gardner took me there with his now grown son to recall the decisions that faced him. No one is supposed to live in here. No one is supposed to just spend extended periods of time in here. This is a public restroom. This is not a living space. But were it not for this space, there were some days we would have had no place else to go. <sighs> I mean, a lot of decisions, a lot of hard decisions were made right here about what are you going to do with your life? Where are you going to go? How are you going to get there? This time I went back with Will into that space. I couldn't be there any longer than a moment. 
I couldn't be there. And I turned to Will and I said, let's go. He said, no, leave me here for a minute. And I got to tell you, when he came out, he was a different guy. Uh, the phrase I once heard him use was that it was as the ghost in the walls had jumped out into him. One of the great details in Gardner's story is that when San Francisco's Bay Area Rapid Transit System issued new bonds to raise money a few years ago, one of the underwriters was Chris Gardner's company. Gardner has returned to being a star on the investment circuit since shooting on the film Wrapped late last year. Occasionally, he returns to Glide Memorial to work on the food line where he once stood and to make sizable regular donations. And he started what he says he hopes will be his masterpiece. My brother. An international mission designed to create economic opportunities in South Africa. This man, whose own father had abandoned him, found himself carrying his plans into the office of Nelson Mandela. You walked into his office. Yes, he sir. looked at you and said, welcome home, son. I had to be 46 years old. And for the first time in my life, a man ever to say the words to me, welcome home, son. And for it to be Nelson Mandela. Uh, I cried. I cried. By now, Gardner has had opportunities to examine his life and see it through the eyes of others that would have been unimaginable only three years ago. That time-worn cliche, it's just like a movie script, turned out to be true. Whatever new discoveries he's made about himself, the quote on the front of his book echoes the decision he made when he was still a child, silently promising how he would be different from the stepfather who terrorized him. I hold one thing dearer than all else, he wrote, my commitment to my son. You're a stockbroker by profession. Are, are you surprised that your story has resonated with so many people? I think my profession is totally secondary to my journey. It's not what I do, and what I do is not who I am. It's the journey. As Maya Angelou once put it, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. <laughs>